telling you, it was fantastic. It's being in Japan, who knew? Mm, I just got tired of the Pyrenees. You're in, you're out. So rude. I hate when people do this. Guess who? Those have been in there for days. What are you gonna do? Teach our friend in 1G some manners. Walderman, you left your laundry in the dryer. Again. Walderman. 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 My God. Neighbor down the hall found him, said the door was unlocked. Oh, it's cold in here. Windows are open, heat's off. Looks like he won a couple of rounds with somebody. Hey. Hey. I don't see any blood on that knife. It looks like he got strangled. Got raccoon eyes, bruising around the ears. God, it must be 40 degrees in there. Is that gonna mess with your time of death? Yeah, two days, a week, maybe. Well, hopefully you can narrow that down. <laughs> well, it seems he tried to defend himself. I started something he couldn't finish. Either way, he's finished now. Did he work here a long time? 20 years. You two were friends? How was the man's boss? Did you ever meet any of his family or friends? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. He didn't have any particular friends in this office. What, a girlfriend? A girlfriend? Ira? Was he gay? <laughs> uh, just hopeless. You know that show, Queer Eye for a Straight Guy? Even they couldn't do anything for Ira. Well, how about enemies, people he didn't get along with? Well, that was everybody in a way. Ira had a mild disdain for other human beings. Nothing worth getting killed for. There's got to be something you can tell us about this, too. Had black coffee with two sugars and a hot pastrami sandwich on rye for lunch. Every day. I'm trying to tell you, this guy was not exactly Mr. Excitement. That's the picture we're getting, too. Did he have any interests or hobbies? Basketball, pro and college. Knew all the stats. Boy, you to death. That's the only thing he ever talked about. You mind if we look around a little longer? If it helps. Thank you. Mm. Nothing here but a bunch of takeout menus. People couldn't have one appointment in it. Radio. Last week's paper. Sports page. He's got New York, Washington, and India in a circle. Yeah, you knew how to pick them. All those teams won. Hello? If I had to take a guess, I would say our friend is a gambler. All right, we'll be right there. And he's ready for us. The ME on the scene said that he was probably strangled. Well, from the bruising, it looks like somebody put him in a chokehold, but that's not what actually killed him. Second and third vertebrae were fractured. Somebody snapped his neck. How hard is that? It's not easy. It takes a lot of leverage. Like a hanging. Yeah, exactly like a hanging. He was lifted off his feet by his neck. The drag from his body weight helped to break the vertebrae. And Wallerman was what? Five nine? Roughly. So we're looking for somebody who was what? Oh, well over six feet and muscular. Whoever did this was a big, strong guy. Leighton lifted a good thumbprint off his watch, but no hits. If it is our killers, he's not in any of the databases. And no other usable prints in the apartment. Just Walderman's, and his are on the knife, too. Well, what do we know about Mr. Walderman? I think he was a gambler betting on professional basketball teams. He pulled his bank records. He made an $80,000 deposit last month, cashier's check. It's a pretty nice score. Well, if he deposited his winnings in cash, he's not betting online. Well, some of us do prefer to squander our cash in the old-fashioned way. We'll see if he can find out who is taking Mr. Walderman's action. If he was betting enough to get himself killed, he memorized his bookie's number. Where was he calling from? A pay phone? He didn't have a cell phone. Well, check his office logs. Maybe he was betting from work. Huh. Well, here's a number he called one, two, five times in two days last month. Who? Oh, I'm sorry. I got the wrong number. Sorry, bye. Lexington Grant. It's a nice hotel. Maybe you had a friend in for a visit. Cross-check the hotel's records, see if anybody called them back. You get the room number. OK. It's a bunch of junk mail. Hey, 
Rosalie Horton, apartment 4A. Now, what would he be doing with his neighbor's mail? Which one of you is my driver? <laughs> uh, neither, actually. Uh, I'm Detective Fontana. This is Detective Green, New York City Police. Are you Mrs. Horton? Taka Furukawa. Mrs. Horton moved out nearly a year ago. This about the dead guy in Wenji? Yeah, Ira Waldeman. You know him? Not really. He said if I held on to Mrs. Horton's mail, he'd make sure she got it. Mind if I keep packing? I've got a plane to catch. Sure. Where are you off to? London. I'm a nylon. A what? Nylon. New York Londoner. It's a hell of a commute. Tell me about it. <laughs> Man, it's hard to believe that this is the same building. I was just about to say, Mr. Waldeman's apartment don't look like this. He was rent controlled. So was Mrs. Horton. I'm co-op. Uh, do you know where Mrs. Horton moved to? Sorry. Are you going to see her? We hope so. When you do, can you give her these? I was afraid of something like this. I warned him. Warned him about what? Mr. Levin, the owner. He wanted all of us out. The rent control tenants. Ira was the only one who stayed. Did Mr. Levin threaten you? Well, not exactly. He just made it impossible to stay. Then he offered me money. How much? 20000 I told Mr. Levin, thanks, but no thanks. I've been here 30 years. I'm too old to move. Then he just let the place go to hell. First, my electricity went out. He said it was the wiring. I asked him to fix it. He said, maybe you should move to a place that has direct sunlight. So you moved? We all did, but I took the money first. The last time I saw Ira, he told me that Mr. Levin had just cut off his heat, too. Have a seat, Mr. Levin. I have a meeting in an hour. I could reschedule if you think this is going to take a long time. How does 20 to life sound to you? Detectives, I had nothing whatsoever to do with Mr. Walderman's death. Oh, no? He was sitting on a gold mine, one that belonged to you. Yeah, what's that apartment going to be worth after it goes co-op? A million, a million five? I'm a businessman. I solve problems with money, not murder. Is that why you gave Walderman 80 grand to move? Nothing wrong with a little financial incentive. Perfectly legal. But he didn't move. He double-crossed you, right? And it had to piss you off. Now, we know that you didn't strangle him because you're not big enough or strong enough. But he is wealthy enough. He could pay somebody to do it for him. We had an agreement, a contract. He reneged. That's what lawyers are for. Lawyers? You sued him? Hey, he sued me first. Which Ira Waldeman lawsuit did you want? There's more than one. He's the plaintiff in several. Okay, so what's he got versus Jonathan Levin? Restraining order against Mr. Levin. We'll take a copy of that. Hey, what are the other lawsuits? He's suing the Basketball League of America, the Philadelphia Cannons, the New York Empires. Wait. He was one of the fans that got beat up in that big brawl. You saw that footage? It's incredible footage. I think the whole bunch should have been tossed for life. Mr. Walderman claims he was seriously injured, his back. He's also suing one of the players, Silas Inwood. Oh, Inwood. Commissioner suspended him for the rest of the season. But he's still playing while the Players Association takes the league to court. The sports page nowadays. You read it, it's like reading a crime bladder. You can't tell a felon's without a scorecard. Hey, who was he asking for in that suit? Twenty million dollars. Oh, baby. I take it you have a new indictment. Before we rearrest your client, we thought you might be interested in a deal. Not for something I didn't do. Man, this isn't fair. What do you want from me? We know Ira Walderman was harassing you every time you came to New York to play. All the hardcore fans know where the visiting teams stay. Harassment is just nothing out of the ordinary. He also called you at your home in Pennsylvania, your unlisted number. Is that who that was? I didn't know. I just changed my number. Walderman took the train to Philadelphia half a dozen times in the last three years. We have logs from the cab companies who took him to your house. One driver will testify that he saw you walking across the lawn yelling and cursing at Walderman, calling him by name. <laughs> 